Hi, this is Phil Carlton. Before I get started today, I just wanted to remind you, you can find me over on YouTube under my name, or if you're on Facebook, you can search for Premier Plus Phil and you'll find me there. Today I wanted to spend just a minute talking about our frame tab and showing a couple of quick techniques in working with the frames. So I'm here in Premiere Plus 2 Embroidery and I've brought in one of our sample designs which is just this butterfly. I'm going to go ahead and click on it to select it and then I'm going to go over to the frame tab. Now when we're working on the frame tab, I'm going to be looking at our frames today over on the right side. Although under frames we also have some decorative corners, some side pieces, and then we have flourishes which are elements that you can add on the top or on the bottom of a design. But today I just want to look at the frames. Now notice right now when I came over here, I'm in, if I look at my frame categories, the first four categories are appliques. That means they're going to have placement stitch, tack downs, and then they're going to finish with a satin stitch. Notice also that there are really three different, in this applique shields one for example, I have a square, a circle, and then this shield. Then I have a rectangle, and a tall oval, and a tall shield, and then I have a wide rectangle, a wide oval, and a wide shield. So in that applique shields one, we really have three different shapes that are just kind of adjusted differently. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uncheck group today. When I uncheck group, that means it will bring the frame in, but it won't be connected to my shape. One of the cool things about working with our frames is they are built dynamically or created here in the software. So notice I have a margin set of 2.5 millimeters right now. If I just come over to the far right and click apply with this design selected in the work area, it's going to create that applique frame around my design and it built it out 2.5 millimeters from the edge. I'm going to click undo and I'm going to change my margin to 10 now just so we see the difference. When I click the green check mark now on the far right to apply, it brought that frame in much larger. Because I had group unchecked, this frame is also a separate element. Notice it has green handles, which means if I make it larger or smaller or resize it, it's going to redigitize it just like it would if we were working with a super design or with lettering. So I can just position it as I want really around this and it's going to create it at that size. One of the other nice things about working with our frames is if I right click I can look at the different properties. So I could specify a different applique fabric if I wanted to. I want to look at the satin line because then I can tell it the default width here is 3 but maybe I want this satin stitch to be a 5. A larger satin stitch when I do an embroidery will make it easier for me to trim that fabric. There are two other things I want to demonstrate. On my keyboard, I'm going to press Control A, which will do a select all. Then I'm going to press the delete key to get rid of everything. So if I don't have any design selected, when I create an applique frame, it's going to look at the setting here under size option. So if I click on size option right now, the size is set to 120 millimeters. I'm going to change that to 100, click OK. Now when I click the green check mark all the way to the far right to apply, it's created that frame for me at 100 millimeters. So you can specify how large you want these frames to be and generate them at that size. I'm going to delete that one. There's one other category I want to look at here in the frames, and this is probably one of my favorite kind of hidden tricks. If I come into my frames and scroll down, I want to look at the Candlewick Shields. I'm going to bring in Candlewick Shield number one and then I'm going to click on the size option and I'm going to tell it I want this circle of Candlewick stitches to be let's say 85 millimeters. I'm going to click the OK button and then when I click apply it's created that ring of Candlewick stitches at 85 millimeters. Now one of the really nice things about these Candlewick shields is what this really is is a motif line that makes a circle. So if I right click and go into my motif line properties, I can now choose from any of the hundreds of different motif stitches and apply it to this circle. So I'm going to go to one of our new categories here in Premiere Plus 2 which was general motifs and I'm going to go down, I really liked this one was really kind of nifty, this motif number six. It looks like a little shape on top with a circle, but when I brought it in by clicking OK, it created that pattern. I just thought that motif did such a cool thing. When I looked at it just as the motif, it didn't really get my attention, but looking at what that created, I think that is a really cool shape. 
So working here on the frame tab, especially with these candle wick shields, you have all kinds of options to make designs using our decorative motifs. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this taught you a little about the frames in Premiere Plus 2.